it's easy to become bitter about life and to become angry because of course life is difficult and it's full of disappointments and people are also subject to betrayal on the part of themselves and on the part of people that hypothetically care for them and so it's easy to get bitter and to be resentful and resentment is a very useful emotion even though i think it's one of the most uh, damaging emotions if it's not dealt with properly so if you're resentful basically means only one of two things it either means you should grow up and quit whining and get on with your life or it means that you're being subject to tyrannical forces of one form or another maybe emanating from you maybe a consequence of the natural environment maybe a consequence of society you're being subject to tyrannical forces and you're not uh, putting your own best interests forward like in that broader sense that i described and i don't mean your selfish narrow interests that only serve the purposes of instantaneous gratification i mean your own best interests in terms of developing your character over the span of your life if you're resentful it either means that you're immature and that you should grow the hell up and so you need to figure out how much of your resentment is 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 that and and, and maybe allied with the desire to find other things or people to blame but the other possible option is that you have something to say or do right because you're in a situation where you're violating your own internal ethical standards and you're being required pressured let's say to say things you don't believe or to do things that you believe to be wrong and you need to determine you need to start to strategize and plan how you can rectify that so that you can say what you mean like if you're negotiating with a marital partner for example and there are um, issues in your marriage that aren't making you happy well the first thing is you have to take note of that right to see that you're actually unhappy uh, the second is that you have to be willing to engage in a certain amount of conflict because in order to sort out what's disturbing you you're going to have to lay your concerns out on the table and say well look this is bothering me you don't have to say well I'm right and you're wrong and you have to fix this you have to say well I've noticed that this pattern of interaction or lack of interaction say in our relationship is making me resentful and angry and the danger of that of course is you're going to take it out on yourself and your partner the danger is passion passive aggressiveness you know you're not going to respond to your partner positively when they do something good if you're resentful about them and you're not going to respond to yourself properly and so you have to lay it out on the table but sort of in a spirit of ignorant humility it's like look i'm frustrated i'm feeling this way about our relationship here's what i think might be going wrong maybe on my part and maybe on your part and here's what i envision as a possible solution that's also really necessary if you're going to say what you have to say which is to manifest yourself properly in the world is you can't just complain about what's wrong you have to think well what would my minimal preconditions for satisfaction be you have to offer that to the person that you're negotiating with and so then you learn to abide by the truth to the degree that you can do that and no one does it perfectly you know but it it's very useful because you're not storing up a, a whole sequence of memories about how you were unfairly treated and abused and betrayed instead you're trying to stay on top of it and to note your unhappiness and dissatisfaction when it manifests itself and to accept that that's the case and then to analyze that to see if it's your problem like i said with regards to maturity or if it indicates that there's an injustice in the manner in which you, you and the world are interacting and then to work to set that right even in small ways and so it's it's a matter of character logical development and that makes you that makes you stronger over time in the future authoring program we built this section where you have to outline your most dismal future right what your future would be like if you let all your bad habits and character logical weaknesses have the upper hand and the reason we did this is because you can't be uh you can't straighten yourself out merely as a consequence of hope let's say you lay out a vision for the future and you think about what your life would be what you'd like your life to be like and then that makes you hopeful and it motivates you because it gives you something worthwhile and higher order to work for right 
And that's useful. That's positive emotion working for you because positive emotion is experienced in relationship to goals. But it's not, not as useful as also being chased by something you're terrified by. And if you have a good sense of how you'd fall apart if you stayed weak and just exactly what kind of hell that would be, then when you determine to do something like to tell the truth and to say what you think and to not do things that you hate, then you're going to be pulled along by the purpose that your vision has provided for you, but also pushed along by your desire to avoid the worst forms of hell that you've already outlined for yourself personally. And that can also help you be brave enough to stand up in a situation that would, re would require conflict, because if you have something to say and you have something to negotiate about with someone, then there's going to be a certain amount of conflictual dialogue um, that accompanies that, right? It, it, to, to lay out a set of problems and to describe the fact forthrightly that those problems characterize a relationship and then to seek for solutions is quite stressful in the short term. And it's really easy to avoid. And so people avoid it all the time. And then they store up grievances across the span of the relationships. And eventually the grievances mount to the point where they return in monstrous form and just eat everything up. That's where you get divorces, or that's where you explode at your boss and end up fired. Or that's where you, you know, you develop high blood pressure over 15 years because you can't stand all the accumulated monsters in your closet. And, and you drink yourself into oblivion because you can't stand your life. That's all, you know, very counterproductive. But it's easy to avoid that necessary conflict on a moment to moment basis because it's very stressful to speak forthrightly about genuine conflicts, especially when you're dealing with important parts of your life. But otherwise, you don't straighten them out and then you have to carry all that forward. So you need to be terrified of the consequences of not speaking your piece. And that can counterbalance the terror of actually trying to have a conversation. So, well, you know, and you also have to look with regards to the, the shadow ideas, like you have to get in touch with the depths of your anger. You know, lots of people are resentful about all sorts of things. They're resentful about, oh, women, and they're resentful about men, and they're resentful about the patriarchy, and they're resentful about the left wing, and they're resentful about the right wing, and they're resentful about politicians, and they're resentful about the, the, like the cataclysmic force of nature and its ability to make people sick and, and suffer, and they're resentful about their own inadequacies and about their bad parenting, and God, like the list is just bloody endless, and that can make you very, very angry. That's part of that resentment and cynical and bitter and dark and full of fantasies about destruction and the desire to bring things down and the wish that everyone else suffered and the desire to shake your fist at God. And all of that's really dark. You know, Jung said, well, the shadow, the human shadow extends all the way down to hell. And he really meant that, you know, because all the terrible things that people are motivated to do are associated with that shadow domain and like none of you are any none of you are saints in any likelihood you have a terrible capacity for destructiveness and when you start to consult your resentment and to see how angry you are it can terrify you to see the depths of that anger sometimes that'll manifest itself in very destructive fantasies you know um which you might not want to become conscious of because they're so um brutal, let's say, and so aggressive that you can't even believe that you generate them, the nice person that's you. It's like, so it's quite frightening to open that door and see all that. And that also associates you with the entire dark shadow of mankind, right? The, the satanic element of the human character. And, but it opens the door to understanding as well, to, to understanding how people can do terrible things, because you could see yourself as one of the people who could do terrible things. That's really useful, you know, then you well then maybe you start to be motivated to be the sort of person who wouldn't do terrible things it also is some in perverse sense it's also a discovery of your own strength though because you know if you have that desire for aggression that desire for destruction and that 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 ability to fantasize in that aggressive manner it also means that you can incorporate some of that into your speech and into your actions so that you're a lot more immovable, right? And, and a lot more of a force to contend with. 
It can give you some respect for yourself when you realize that you're a force of destruction as well as creation. And then you're also more likely to treat yourself with a bit more intelligent caution, you know, to know that you're, that part of you is a ticking bomb in some sense that can go off. And so you, you, you tread a bit more lightly around yourself and, and maybe you encourage people to tread a bit more lightly around you as well, which isn't such a bad thing. And all the people that I really admire, that I know, have a clearly dangerous side and you don't want to get, you don't want to have that activated any more than necessary. But it's also what makes them respectable and strong, especially if they have that under control. So, well, that's a bit of a dialogue about shadow integration. It's a very challenging undertaking, you know, to pull in that dark side of your character. And, and that would be all the things that you've repressed or failed to develop as a consequence of trying to be a harmless and, uh, well, let's say a harmless and a harmless citizen who looks virtuous on the surface. That's the Jungian persona. And you need that because everybody needs a mask that they wear in public, like a suit, you know, so that we can tolerate seeing each other on the street we don't have to look right into our depths every time we interact we need that persona but that has to be transcended and the way to transcend that is to integrate the darker parts of the character